Welcome to the Potter Coil Keeper on valve installation video for model CSS. For more information and detailed installation instructions, visit www.pottersignal.com. Potter's Coil Keeper switch is designed to supervise the position of a coil on a solenoid for pre action and deluge fire sprinkler systems as required by NFPA 13. The unit monitors the coil electronically and determines if the coil is installed on the valve stem. This video will cover the installation, wiring, and operation of the coil keeper. Inside the box, you will find the coil keeper switch, the sense feed bracket, sense feed wire, sense return clamp, sense return wire, liquid tight cord grip, half inch NPT nipple, and a number of conduit nuts. Note. An end-of-line resistor and end-of-line diode assembly that are compatible with the releasing control panel being used will need to be provided. One of each will be needed for each coil keeper switch. To prepare the installation of the coil keeper on a two-wire solenoid valve, begin by installing the conduit nut onto the supplied half-inch pipe nipple or other half-inch nipple as needed. Install the sense feed bracket onto the nipple. Thread the nipple into the solenoid coil collar and tighten the conduit nut. Check that there is continuity between the solenoid coil collar and the sense feed bracket using a continuity tester or multimeter. Attach the yellow sense feed wire using the provided ring terminal and screw to the sense feed bracket, making sure the screw is facing out towards the solenoid valve. To prepare the installation of the coil keeper on a three wire solenoid valve, begin by installing the conduit nut onto the supplied half inch pipe nipple or other half inch nipple as needed. Note. The sense feed bracket and yellow sense feed wire are not used on three wire solenoid switch applications. Thread the nipple into the solenoid coil collar and tighten the conduit nut. Thread a conduit nut onto the supplied half-inch pipe nipple that was installed during the solenoid valve preparation step. This process will be the same for two-wire and three-wire solenoid valve applications. Mount the coil keeper switch onto the nipple and secure with provided conduit nut and tighten. Note, the coil keeper can be mounted using any of the three conduit entrances and rotated to ensure clearance of the trim piping. Install the included liquid tight cord grip into the coil keeper housing. Do not tighten the outer nut at this time. Test fit the sense return bracket around the parallel wrench flats of the solenoid valve to ensure proper spacing of set screw and lock screw of the bracket. Adjust lock and set screw if less or more spacing is needed. Note, for larger solenoid valves, the lock nut on the clamp can be moved to the outside of the U-bracket for more clearance. Attach the blue sense return wire to the set screw on the U-bracket using the provided ring terminal washer and nut. This process is more easily done while the bracket is not attached to the solenoid valve. Make sure the solenoid valve is centered in between the U-bracket and adjust the lock screw until it is touching the solenoid valve. Tighten the lock screw on the sense return clamp until the U-bracket is securely connected to the solenoid valve. Push the unstripped yellow sense feed wire, if applicable, and blue sense return wire through the liquid tight cord grip. The supplied cord grip has openings for three holes. Note, the yellow wire will not be used for three wire solenoid valve applications.
Ensure sense feed and or return wires are not obstructed and remove excess slack in the wires by pulling through the cord grip. Ensure coil can be removed from the valve without strain on the wires. Note, the yellow wire will not be used for three-wire solenoid valve applications. Cut excess wiring to manageable length and tighten the outer nut of the cord grip to secure the wires. Wire the technician supplied end of line diode assembly by connecting the black wire to the SOL slash EOLD negative terminal and red wire to the REL positive slash ELOD positive terminal. Wire the sense return clamp by connecting the blue sense return wire to the sense return terminal. If a two wire solenoid valve is being installed, wire the sense feed bracket by connecting the yellow sense feed wire to the sense feed terminal. If a three wire solenoid valve is being installed, the solenoid ground wire will be connected to the sense feed terminal and the yellow sense feed wire will not be used and should not have been installed in a previous step. Wire power to the coil keeper by wiring supervised 24 VDC from the AUGS power of the releasing panel or other listed source by connecting to the 24 VDC positive and negative terminals. Wire releasing control panel supervisory input zone by connecting to the terminals marked SUPV normally open and common. A technician provided end of line resistor that is compatible with the panel manufacturer will need to be installed across these terminals. Wire releasing control panel release circuit by connecting the negative wire to the SOL slash REL negative terminal and the positive wire to the REL positive slash EOLD positive terminal. Wire the releasing solenoid valve by connecting one wire to the SOL slash REL negative terminal and the other wire to the SOL slash EOLD negative terminal. Note, solenoid valve coil slash valve assembly is grounded through the coil keeper sense return clamp. The coil keeper and its associated protective monitoring system should be tested in accordance with applicable NFPA codes and standards and or the authority having jurisdiction. Remove the coil from the solenoid valve. The coil keeper will illuminate the amber LED labeled coil removed and the releasing control panel will enunciate a supervisory condition. The coil keeper will illuminate the red LED labeled releasing circuit energized when the releasing circuit is energized. This allows the technician to locally see the state of the circuit and prevent the replacement of the coil on the solenoid valve while in an energized state. Caution. Failure to de-energize the coil prior to reinstalling the coil may result in an accidental release. After testing has been completed, reinstall the coil onto the valve. Ensure all coil retaining hardware is installed to the solenoid valve manufacturer's recommendations. Press the reset button, depicted by the large circle P in the middle of the coil keeper, to return the switch and the releasing panel back to normal. Note. The panel will only reset this way if the zone is non-latching. It may be required to reset the panel to clear the supervisory condition. If the coil keeper switch fails to reset, a local error code will flash. Refer to the troubleshooting section of the datasheet for more information. This concludes the installation, wiring, and testing procedures for the Potter coil keeper switch. For more information, please visit www.pottersignal.com.